zero. I don't know what, what, what it is about the timer, but when the timer came on in five minutes, it just, everybody just got really quiet. Like, something's gonna happen in five minutes, right? Well, good evening. Good evening. We're glad you're here. Welcome to Bethel Baptist Church in Parkersburg, West Virginia. My name is Max Blake, I'm one of the elders here at Bethel Baptist. Our, unfortunately, our pastor and his wife have uh, been tested positive for COVID, so they are not with us this evening. They're at home recovering. So, uh, apologies for that, but uh, that's the best place for them uh, at this time uh, to, get, to get back to good health. But we do want to welcome you to Bethel. Uh, welcome to the musicians. We're looking forward to a great evening. Uh, we want to open in prayer, and then I'm going to turn it over to the musicians. I'm not sure who goes first or what the combinations are. You guys know that, so we'll just depend on you, okay? So let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your great love for us. Lord, our prayer tonight is as we gather, and we enjoy fellowship and music and, and laughter and just a, a good time of being together this evening. Lord, our prayer is that our conduct, the singing, the, the musicians, all of this would be pleasing to you. We make it our aim to please you. We pray that your name and your son would be lifted up to draw all of his own to him. This is our prayer, Lord. So we ask you to bless this evening. May we be a blessing to you and to each other. And we just thank you for this opportunity. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. 
did see But I found out for That something's changed Inside of me When I met the man From Galilee
bass mandolin on? I popped it. Okay, yeah. Go to bass. All right. I got about three. I'd like to go bass. We started out singing with my mom and dad. Um, Andrew and I did. And, um, we had these youngins. It got hard to travel. And um, so we just talked them to play and started dragging them around. That's it. Only drug problem my kids have ever had is we drug them around from church to church all over Central West Virginia. That would help me. I, that helps you. I could do it without it, but it would be scary. Is it first fret? Yes. That's yeah, scary. Yeah. This was in the first fret, Johnny. What's that? G sharp. Okay, that's definitely. <laughs> I just like this song real well. I uh, sang a song. I hope you haven't heard them either. Um, but they're, they're really a good, good group. But we, we just love the messages in the song. Through the crowd. 
your attention on what the You were occupied playing music and singing. I like to switch off with Isaac on the mantle a little bit because he usually tunes it before he gives it back to him.
might be our last song. Depends on how it goes. Oh yeah, we'll do that one last. And we'll do two more.
last song there's a bunch of family. This is that song, uh, something about that name. I don't know if that's what it's called. We don't know yet, Johnny. Okay. We're awaiting further orders. What chords are in, Andrew? B flat. B flat. We tried to see, but we just B flat anyways.
time uh, with you this evening. Uh, when you came in, you passed an old Old Testament to each of you. And I wanted to say that whether you're Christian or not, there's two purposes for this, okay? If you know or believe in Christ, then you learn. Uh, what I'll show you here, you take this Bible and make more as you need. You take some more and give it away to someone else, okay? But this book, the Bible, is not just any ordinary book. It is the Word of God, the mind of God, the love of God, and the power of God in, in this little book. And uh, there have been attempts to eradicate the Bible from all the centuries, but it survived. It has survived so many attempts to, to get rid of it. And the neat thing about it is it's been very carefully and meticulously uh, uh, rewritten uh, over and over in different languages. And those meetings, we have over 190 languages that we put this Bible in. Okay. But I wanted to just take a few moments, and I, I want to say, if you've never read I hear people say, oh, I've got ten of these. But it's okay to have ten of them, but you've got to read. Pick one and read it, okay? You must read God's Word. And I want to challenge you to read the Bible. And I would challenge you right now to start with the Gospels. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell the story of, of Christ of the walk with him and what he said, what he did. But today, I wanted you to take your little Bible, and I hope everybody has one. In the back, I want to go through the back cover with you. Now, this may be something new to you. Um, uh, if it is, just bear with me, and we'll answer as many questions as we possibly can. But first, I want you to know that God loves you. Now, you've probably heard that before, but I can tell you right now that you have no idea how much God loves you. He, God is love. His love is perfect. It's unconditional. It's endless. It is. He said, I am sent, sent me. He, he refers to himself as I am. His love is. It's constant. And in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Notice it says, whosoever. It didn't say if some, or maybe someone around you, it said, whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him. And also in Romans 5.8, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God loves you. I wanted to share with you my own personal, uh, I didn't become a Christian until I was 19. I was a student at Glenville State College. And, uh, and I took my little red Bible, the little Gideon Testament that was given to me in the fifth grade. And as I was reading, there was a place where it described Jesus being beaten, spit on, ridiculed, mocked. Uh, I mean, just terribly, treated terribly, nailed to a cross and left there to die. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I thought, what kind of love is that? Do you know? So I want to ask you right now, if you agree that God loves you, it's very important. Is anyone here, does everybody agree? God loves you. He loves you. Amen. Second thing, there's all are sinners. Now we got a problem. And, and we're living in a world today where there seems to be um, no wrong. I mean, it's just everybody has their own mind. But all have sinned, as, as it says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. And in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, if you think about the Ten Commandments, and you think about God as being a just God, and, I, and we think about justice, God has to do what he says he's going to do. And he says the wages of sin is death. And when we talk about sin, is any time you go against the Ten Commandments. Think for a second, have you ever told a lie? Oh, yeah. If you say, no, I haven't, you're lying right now, Okay. <laughs> So that makes you a liar in God's eyes, in a just God's eyes. You are a liar. Have you ever taken anything, stolen anything? Oh, yeah, we have. We have. We've even stolen people's time. A lot of times we think it's all material, but there are times when we have stolen people's time. I'll be there, and you're not. I'll pick you up, and you're not. I will call you, and you're not calling them. We're stealing that way as well. And Jesus said, when you look upon a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed, or lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. We have all done this okay and if you use God's name in vain now that's the thing as a kid I use God's name in vain not even thinking not even thinking about it you hear it all the time you hear people say things so you have to realize that all have sinned and do you agree first of all that God loves you but secondly we got a problem all have sinned and because we've sinned we have been separated from God you know what's amazing is he knew this 
from the beginning, before he even created everything, he was, love is something that can't be forced. And, you know, people think, well, why did God do that? Why didn't he just make us obey? You can't force love. It has to be free will. And because it has to be free will, we have free choice. And guess what? We mess up big time. And he knew that. So he provided a way. Look at the third. It says God's remedy for sin. Romans 6.23. This is good news. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. God said, you know what? I, and, and remember in the Old Testament, if this is not the Old Testament other than Psalms and Proverbs, but if you read the Old Testament, sacrifices were required. Thousands and thousands of animals without spot or blemish were required to pay for sins over and over and over. And God even said, that's not my will. That's not what I want. I don't want your sacrifices. I want your heart. And so he had a remedy, Jesus Christ. He became a man, came and dwelt among us, and he was the sacrifice, the final sacrifice for our sins. Also, uh, Roman, or John 1, 12, listen carefully. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. It's an amazing thing because people try to make it complicated. <laughs> Max was talking, I guess I wasn't here. I was in another church, but I hear Max said it wasn't rocket science. I've thought that over and over and over. It's not rocket science. Just believe. Just believe. So you may be sitting there thinking, it can't be that easy. Yes. Just believe that God loved you so much that he came and gave himself a ransom for your sins. I want to read it one more time. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You must believe that. Christ is not dead. He is not. You've seen the movie, God's Not Dead. You've heard all these kind of things. Christ rose from the dead. He is alive, and he will come again one day. And he rose from the dead for you. Right there where you are, where you're sitting. So there is a remedy. So you realize that God loves you. And everybody agrees. You also realize we have a problem. It's called sin. But now we have a remedy. And the remedy is Jesus Christ who died in your place. Now I want you to also to realize that all may be saved. This is not just for um, one faith. or like It's not just for the Jewish people. It's for the Gentiles. Everyone. Everyone can be saved. We, th- we look at the Middle East. All Middle Eastern people can be saved. Everyone can be saved. Okay? I want to read to you from Revelation 3. I'm sorry. Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him. Wow. Jesus stands at the door of your heart right now. Knock, knock, knock. He doesn't force his way in. You must open that door. You must open that door and let him in. You receive him. Now, with his power, yes, he could force his way right into your life. Yes. But again, I said that love is a conscious decision. It is never forced. So he stands at the door and knocks. And in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, with that in mind, I want want you to think just for a second here. Do you believe everything we've talked about? That God loves you? Do you realize that there's a problem? It's sin. And we all have that problem. And it's a bad problem problem. It's a terrible, uh, terrible problem. It separates us from God eternally unless we accept Christ as Savior. And Christ is our remedy. Now, with that, I want you to look on the back cover. There's a decision to be made. It's decision time. Now, a lot of people would think, well, I'll do that tomorrow. Like gone with the wind, Scarlet, I'll do this tomorrow, you know. It may not be a tomorrow. So many times, uh, people have just been taken away. I remember once at a graduation. I'm sorry, it wasn't graduation. It was at a, a baccalaureate. One of our seniors went home, and the trailer caught on fire, and he died. But what's really neat is he accepted the Lord that night at the senior sermon. So it could happen, and it happens any time. So 
Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to make a decision. Now I want to talk to you about that decision. You need to confess with your mouth. I'll, I'll read that to you in a second. Jesus hung on the cross publicly. It was a public execution. It was shameful. It was painful. It was lonely. It was horrible. But Jesus hung on the cross publicly for you. All he asks is that you would publicly acknowledge him. So I'm going to ask you to do a couple things here. I want to read this to you. And after a while, if you want to come forward, we can pray this prayer together. But it says, confessing to God that I am a sinner and believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross and was raised for my justification, I do now receive and confess him as my personal Savior. And there's a place there to sign it and date it. Now, it's that simple. I got to tell you, when you do that, heaven goes crazy. I would love to see that, but the Bible tells us that the angels rejoice at a sinner who's repented and has accepted Christ. It is now is the time. So I'd ask you uh, here just in a moment, if you want to come forward, uh, I could get a pen, we could sign them right now, or, or uh, we could have, have you have a little time with a counselor in the back and they can answer questions and uh, you can uh, say this out loud. But it's important that you do that, that you publicly accept Christ because he publicly died for you. I've got a couple more scriptures to read to you. And it, and it talks about seeking a church. You want to find a good church and attend that church and learn and grow. Yes, you do need to go and attend church. Yes, it is important. Okay? But I want to look at uh, 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may be starting out thinking, oh. A lot of people think they have to be good to, before they come to the Lord. No, he wants you just as you are. As come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He, he said to Peter several times, follow me. Come on, Peter, follow me. He had to say it over and over. And finally, before he left, even one more time, he said, Peter, follow me. So he's maybe saying that to you right now. Follow me. There is an assurance. You have the assurance of your salvation. Look at Romans 10, 9. So where it says in the back there, it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Wow. That means that you are now reconciled to God. Your sins have been taken care of by Jesus. Now, that's pretty heavy stuff. You may cry. I want to warn you. When, when the full extent of that hits you, you may cry. That's fine. But you shall be saved, it says. In John chapter 5, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting light, life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The words of our Lord. Confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart, and you're saved. Okay? And then go from there. Who knows what? What journey you might, it's, it's amazing. These guys listen to this music up here. This is amazing. I bet you, oh, 10 years ago, they may have thought this is never going to happen. You know, the God would never use you in a band or 20 years ago or whatever. I know coming from Gilmer County High School, I never believed that the principal would be someone who has such a powerful message. That's awesome. I, was, I used to be a principal also, and it's a, it's a tough job. And it's not very fun sometimes, okay? But you have Christ in there with you in that principal's office. But God will take you where you are, and he will put you on a journey that you will not believe. i got one more verse for you. John chapter 20, verse 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now, just want to go over this with you again. Two, two kinds of people in here. First of all, those of you who may have not heard this message, you may have, may have heard it. and you've, you, may, you may have been going to church for years. You may have been attending church and never said publicly, I accept Christ as my Savior. Okay, But first of all, you know God loves you. And you also know there's a problem called sin. But God has made a remedy for that sin through the person of Jesus Christ. His blood shed, his life given as a ransom for you. That you might have eternal life. And then you have the assurance of salvation. Hey, hey, God says that it's going to happen. You have the assurance of salvation. You don't have to worry. 
You can go home and put your mind at ease. You don't have to question. Now, Satan may throw questions in your mind, but the, the, the word tells you right here that you have the assurance of salvation. Okay? If that's the case, and, and you are today for the first time accepting Christ, I'd like for you to just come forward. And, and so coming forward, you're saying, I accept Christ as Savior. And uh, we can sign this little Bible and date it. And uh, maybe you talk with the counselor and pray with them this prayer. And the second group of people that I'm talking to are you who know Christ. You got this little Bible now. <laughs> you may have 10 of them. I don't know. Take those little Bibles and give them to somebody else. We're going to make you a Gideon for a day, okay? Give that Bible to someone else. Lead them through the back cover. Uh, also, I don't know if you have um, exchange students in your school. We have exchange students at Parkersburg South. And I remember talking to a Finnish student, a, a student from all over the country. But John 3.16 is written in lots of different languages in the front. And it's so cool to watch them read that. Uh, you know, I can't read Chinese, but it's written in there. And it's fun to watch them uh, to read John 3.16, and it opens a door. So you have that word, that power. This is powerful. And I'd ask you to give that away. So... Anybody have a question or a comment, anything? Anyone want to make a decision right now? You can make that decision and come forward. Um, anyone? You can, may make it tonight at home. There may be someone at home right now watching. You want to make that decision right now. Just bow your head and, and pray and ask God to forgive you of your sins. And believe in your heart that he died and he rose from the dead and he will come again one day. That he has redeemed you through his sacrifice. Okay? I'm going to close in prayer, and we'll take out whatever you guys want to come back up and sing. That's fine if you want to take a break. But I'll just wonder again, being a teacher, does anyone have a question or comment? Everybody okay? If you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know, I want to go forward, you come forward. You come forward. Nicodemus went by night, and uh, you come by day right now. Come forward, okay? Anyone, anyone. All right. Let me have a prayer and then we'll, we'll keep on going. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and place and for this opportunity. We thank you for these that are bringing this music, Lord. We pray that you give them safe travels and, and bless their efforts, Lord. Bless everything they do, where they travel, where they go. Oh, what wonderful, wonderful testimony and through music and glorifying you through these instruments, through your word. Uh, bless them, Lord, as, uh, in all that they do. And help us, Lord, in our struggle to serve you each day. Each day we need to come to you and, uh, and ask for you to help us, to forgive us, to guide us, to direct us. Help us to study your word and to live by the statutes you put there. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Before I give this mic up, I want to challenge anybody. If you're kind of a skeptic, I'm going to dare you to read the book of John. Carefully and slowly, the book of John, the gospel of John, I dare you, okay? Then we'll talk about it in about a month, okay? Thank you very much.
and the first uh, person I'd ever led to the Lord um, was there at that academy. We were down washing clothes together. His name's Brian, little blonde haired feller, and uh, we were both juniors in high school. And uh, I, I was scared, but I was, I was bold in the Lord from the meeting we had, and I told him about the Lord, and he told me all the troubles he had at home, and he had a rough life at home. And um, he accepted the Lord. He prayed. We prayed together. So that old washing machine was beaten, and we were down there. I, don't, I can't remember where we were on, on campus. But, um, but thank you, brother. I appreciate your steadfastness for decades um, and what you've done for children and, and what you mean to me. And, and um, you don't know, you know, who waters and, and the growth that comes afterwards and things that happen. And, um, but you never lose by investing in a kid and sharing the gospel with a kid. And, and I appreciate that.
Share with you all I'm thankful of, Lord, I give you my 
really share with you all, but to be up here with a bunch of friends, and, and we have so much fun up here, we forget someone said we'd just sing to you, or have a song, so I said, that ain't a good idea, because between all of us, I mean, we know bits and pieces of all of them, and we get desperate, we just mix them all together and make up new ones, and, and we just have a really good time, don't we, preacher? This could be one of those songs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it makes all kinds of notes in here. Yeah, this, this song, I don't know what's happening. I think these lights are making these words shrink. I can't <laughs> see very good up here. Okay. <laughs>
Mighty rushing wind, oh, hear the cry in my voice. I felt like a minute cry in the desert land. I'm thirsty for your water, Lord, that flows from your throne. And the long just to stand in that again. Rain on me. Oh.
We're going and we want to take everybody with us.
96, it says play two miles. And you turn and you go two miles and it says play two miles. <laughs>
Yep. I said, well, plan B, let's go to the base. <laughs> We'll do this twenty main line right here. This one's called What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Would you guys stand up, please? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time we've enjoyed together to sing your praises, to enjoy excellent music. This is our offering to you, our excellence, the excellence of these musicians and the excellence of our love to you. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for the gospel presentation. What a simple message. Look to Jesus and believe. We don't have to understand how it works. We just have to know that it does work. It is your work, your saving grace, and your saving power. We pray that you would bless us with a safe travel home. And if it be your will, give us a, a new day tomorrow that we may serve you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming.